Hi, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make some beautiful Christmas tag ornaments out of recycled Christmas cards. Now, after Christmas last year, it was well after Christmas, Dollar Tree was selling their Christmas cards for 50 cents a box and they were actually very limited on their designs but I decided to go ahead and pick up a few boxes. So this is one of them and I turned these cards into this tag right here. I don't know if you can see how pretty this is um, or whether the light picks up the shine but it really is pretty. And this is the back and I'll give you the links as to where to buy these charms here. Um, these were very inexpensive. They're on eBay and I think I paid less than two dollars for I think 15 of them or something like that but I will definitely give you the links in the drop down bar below the video and also on my blog. And I picked up another box of Christmas cards from the Dollar Tree last year and I turned this into this and then this is the back I thought it turned out really nice so I also picked up this box and we're going to make a tag today out of this one and I think it will turn out really pretty so with that said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need some craft tags. Now, um, you can go online on eBay or Etsy to purchase them. Um, they have them in the craft stores as well. However, I'm going to show you how you can make your own very easily and it'll be just as nice. So what I did was I made this pattern for you and I'll put the link down below in the drop down bar as well as on my blog and um, you can when you click on the link you can save the PDF to your computer or you can just print it out there so it's whatever you'd like um, you'll need some boxes you can use cereal boxes don't be worried about how flimsy these are because I'll show you what we'll do to um, put them together and they'll be nice and sturdy by the time we're finished. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these little tags and just kind of rough cut around it. Like so. Okay. And then I'm going to take these right here and I'm going to place one on top of the other to where the print side is on the inside. Okay. And I'm going to lay this tag like this on top and I'm going to take my stapler and right in the middle of the tag I'm just going to staple it like that then I'm going to rough cut around this tag like so okay let me move the camera up a little bit Okay. Now you're going to use the long blade scissors and the reason why I chose this style tag instead of the ones with the scalloped edges is because you can make nice clean cuts and it'll look even. That's why you need the long blade scissors as well. Because you can start at one end like this and then make one straight cut like that to make it look nice and even. So 
so I'm going to do this all the way around. If you need to shave the sides a little, you can do that. Okay, but as you can tell, it looks as you can tell, it looks pretty nice. Okay, now for this part here, just going to take your hole punch, and I'm just opening this up slightly make the first punch and then I'm going to lay that on top and make the second punch. Okay. Then I'm going to come back in and take this staple out. I have a staple, staple remover here. Okay. All right. So we have this back to back and you don't have to worry about the little staple holes because we're covering that up with the um, Christmas cart on both sides. So by the time we're finished this will be a nice sturdy tag. So I'm going to open this up and I like using the turbo tacky glue. It really holds it nicely. And I'm just about running out of this stuff so I'm going to have to get another bottle pretty soon okay I'm going to take my finger and just kind of smear it, making sure that it's on the edges here too. And this will also help to stiffen it up a lot, <laughs> this Turbo Tacky Glue. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these little hand wipes, the citrus hand wipes. This is a store brand, but they're, um, the name brand is Wet Ones. Or, yeah, Wet Ones. But I just, I keep it. <laughs> Bidip -bidip, that's all, folks. <laughs> I can't get my words out of my mouth today. Okay. Um, there we go. Alright, here we go. Now, Make this nice and even, press it down, and as you can tell, it looks really good. And I think it's actually a little sturdier than a craft tag, so that's good news. So while it's drying, you would be very smart to put something heavy on it, either a heavy book or something like that, and allow it to dry thoroughly. And that way it won't tag won't curl up on you or anything like that. Okay, so let's go on to the next part. Okay, so while the um, tag that I showed you how to make is drying, I'm going to be using just a regular um, craft tag so I can continue with my tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this card in half, right up the middle of the line there. Don't throw away this piece because sometimes we're able to find things um, to use on this part, either either on the inside where the words are, and sometimes even on the back. Okay, but for now, we're going to just be using what we have here on the front of this card. <clears throat> now, 
you're going to have to decide where you want to position your image on your card. And since we'll be tracing it with a pencil, we don't want to lay this right on the front and do that. The easiest way that I found was to lay the, your craft tag on, on the back behind the card and then hold your card up to a desk lamp and you can see perfectly exactly where your image will fit onto your card because the light will be shining from behind and you can move around your um, your tag and decide exactly where you want it to be. Now if you don't have a desk lamp um, you can do the same thing with um, a flashlight just have somebody else hold it so you can manipulate where you want this and um, you can also use uh, those little battery operated lamps um, that you'll find in the camping, camping section so I'm going to do that right now I'm going to hold it up to my desk lamp and I can see everything perfectly from there so I like the way I'm going to move it around and it shows you where the hole is at the top too you can see that so you don't accidentally put the image over there and okay so I'm holding it exactly where I liked it here so all I'm going to do is just see if I can straighten this up a little bit to make it look nice and even then I'm going to take a mechanical pencil because I really like the way this fine tip gets in there it's very close to the edges like that. Oops, something else I forgot. I forgot to trace the little circle at the top. So now I have to lay this back down. And do this. So I'll just kind of know where to punch my hole. Okay. So now I'm just going to cut that out, but I'm going to be careful not to chop up the card here. I'm, I want to save this part of the card. So with your long handled scissors, cut this out. So I'm going to hang on to this part of the card. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is hold this, straighten this up like this on the card and then turn it over to punch that hole. taking just a piece, or actually one piece of a, a Ziploc bag, and I'm going to put this on here, because we're going to use the, um, oh gosh, where did it go? Oh, here it is. It <laughs> fell over and I couldn't see it. I'm going to be using the Elmer's glue stick, and I, I like the disappearing purple. Here, let me move this up a little bit because you can see exactly where you put it. Be very careful to get the edges because we want everything to stick and we don't want any peeling around the edges. And 
and I work fast with this because it does dry very quickly. Okay, so even this up like so and press straight down like this. See the image? Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I'm going to um, put something heavy on this for just a second. And I'm going to cut out some of these words. Let's see. I think these will probably be a little too large. I, at first I was going to use them. But I think for, for this card, it'll be a little too large. So I'm going to go with the inside of the card. And I'm just going to cut out, like in a little cloud shape, this word that says peace. I think that'd be really pretty. rough cut it first and then I'll show you I'm going to use smaller scissors for this one okay and all I'm doing is just kind of cutting in a circular motion around the word peace making it kind of wavy like a cloud would look problems here. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to rub this like that. Doesn't matter if there's any purple on that. That will dry completely clear. And I think maybe right here would look nice. Okay. Says peace. Okay. So on the back of the card, hmm, I would sure like to do something with this still. And I'm thinking that with this piece of the card, maybe I can cover up those words and cut it out like that so it'll be on the back of the tag. So I'm going to turn this over for a moment and I'm going to hold this up to the light to see where my tag is. And I think I can do it. Yes, I think I can. It'll be close. definitely be close. But I think I can just make it. So I'm going to hold it exactly like I had it. Kind of straighten it up with the edge there. Now I'm just kind of winging this, folks. So, And you'll do the same thing when you put your cards together. this long handled scissors and I'm not worried 
uh, about the edges because I know I'll have to shave a little bit off just to trim them up once I put this on. But this is kind of the fun part, deciding exactly how and where you want things on your card. You really have to use your imagination. Okay. So I'm going to put this like that, and then I'm gonna, going to punch it like that. And you see how there might be a little along the edges? We'll shave that off and I'll show you how to do that. Yeah, so, but for now, let's put some more of this glue. You can either put it on here or on here, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as you get it on there somehow, huh? To us, a child is born, and I know how to cover that up not completely, but enough to where it looks like just a design in the background. Okay, so as you can tell, it needs to be shaved a little here and there. Just take your long handled scissors and put your blade's butt up against it, just do this. and it'll turn out really nice. Okay. Now look how nice and even it looks around the edges. Okay. All right. So before I go on to the next step, I definitely need for this to dry, so I'm going to place something heavy and flat on this, on a flat surface, not a curved surface. Make sure it's nice and flat. And when it's completely dry, then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now our um, tag is completely dry. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, of the flat back rhinestones around the border before I even begin to think of glitter. And we're going to glue the back of, um, or the bale to the back of the tag as well. So we're going to start by using the rhinestones and I'm using the two millimeter rhinestones because I think that would look really pretty on here. I think it will give it a nice delicate touch. So we'll see if I'm wrong or right. Okay. So I'm just going to anchor this at the end here, like so. Press down on it. And then I'm going to do that with the rest of them and just kind of line them up here. And we have one little extra here I'm going to peel off. So we have one side taken care of. I think that's going to turn out really pretty. And then I'll do the other side as well. down. Take off that one little extra there. Okay. All 
right. Now, I'm going to do the bottom part. Okay, now I'm going to press down hard on those. Okay. All right, now and then I'm going to do the same thing here. Having a hard time seeing where the edge is on this side. Okay, let me hold it up. There, now I can see it better. Right here, okay. There we go. Press this down. So now we just have this across the top to do. did look delicate, I thought so. Okay. And um, so I'm going to set these aside for now. And I'm going to put, uh, let's see, hmm, maybe for the back part right here I'm going to see if I can I don't know if I'll have enough let's see yeah let me look in here for a second I was originally thinking of maybe putting like a light glitter over here uh, where you can kind of see through the design but you really can't tell what it is but then I had a different idea and I don't know if this will work but I'm hoping it will so I'm going to take some rhinestones I'm going to lay them here. To kind of cover cover up the design. It'll look like a border. Yeah, and like I said, folks, I'm just winging this. I mean, I'm just making this stuff up as I go along. <laughs> so let me move this 
it's lacking a little bit at the bottom. So let me see if I can kind of get it in the middle. Okay. I have to kind of watch where I'm putting it here. Okay. I would say maybe about here. Yeah. And then I will press this down firmly. And I think I'm going to cover up this completely by using the same method. And that way it'll look like a little color is coming through, but you really can't tell what it is. It looks more like a design. Okay, let's do this. Then I'm going to take a small strip here of these to kind of finish it off since I don't have room with the larger rhinestones. See how handy these little guys come in? There we go. Alright, and I might just put a row of the thin ones there. Sorry guys, I love bling. <laughs> more pieces for right up here. So one, two, three will do it. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? Is that pretty on the back? And we have the word art. Okay. So now I'm going to come in and glue the bail on. this aside and like I said before it can be a small or a medium bale the size isn't important really in this project you can even use a large one but I'm just gonna stick with a medium size All right. now normally I would never suggest hot glue when gluing any kind of jewelry pieces like this because it'll hold but um, only for just a little while and then eventually fall off but with this Gorilla Glue it really grabs and it grabs a lot faster uh, the Gorilla Glue glue sticks than the regular glue sticks at least I think so got a little too much on there I'm gonna some of that off. It kind of came out all at once. I was pumping my glue gun because I'm getting towards the end. Okay, so you have to do it like this and be quick about it because it does grab right away. See, it's already grabbed. And that's very sturdy on there. And that's kind of in the middle. 
and we'll dangle the charms from here uh, when we do that. But in the meantime, um, while this is drying, right here, um, we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I did the glitter and what I avoided uh, when using the glitter. So we'll do that next. Okay, so you will be needing the um, Mod Podge Super Gloss and this is the one coat gloss finish and um, I put some in a little bottle cap here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an old soft paintbrush by the way this stuff washes out so easily with a little soap and water and I'm just going to kind of mop around the image and around the star. Now generally you would think with something like this your um, your first idea would probably be to paint over that and add glitter but I found just by working on the other gift tags that when I added glitter on top of this then you lost the image. It was gone. Um, you really couldn't see it so I'm going around the image like that and if I put glitter around the image it seems to kind of bring it out bring it to light and you'll see what I'm talking about I'm not mopping over the word piece I do something a little different for that and I'll show you that as well when when it's time. Okay. So let's see how this works. I'm going to be sprinkling the Marquee, the Heidi Swap Marquee Love um, glitter, and this is a kind of a medium chunky glitter and it's circular in shape and if you can't find this exact brand on in a craft store or on um, eBay you can use the Createology glitter and get the um, the real pretty clear iridescent kind that almost looks like snow and just add a touch of silver glitter to it not much just a touch okay so I'm just going to gently sprinkle this on around like this a little at a time okay and then I'm going to take this Recollections fine glitter called Glitz and it's an iridescent glitter and it's fine so just going to tap that like that. So we have two different kinds of glitter on here right now. All right. I'm not going to really shake this. I'm going to just turn it upside down and uh, just to where yeah. And you'll see some that of the glitter that's clinging because of you know the static and everything on the image. But I'm not worried about that. I'm just going to allow this to dry and then I'll come back in with a really soft paintbrush and brush away the excess glitter um, where there aren't any glue spots. So let's do that first and you'll see how pretty this will turn out when we're completely finished with it. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and allow this to dry. Okay, so this is completely dry and I brushed it off with um, a very soft brush here and so now you can see the, the result. So now we're going to put um, little charms at the bottom here. Now I was originally going to use these little swirl beads but when I put it up against here it just was not the right color so I opted against this and instead I'm using a 10 millimeter acrylic 
bead so it'll be lightweight and then two a six millimeter uh, crystal rondelles and then of course the little poinsettia charm bead here or not bead but poinsettia charm and I'll put a little flat back rhinestone in there um, but in the meantime we're going to make these charms this is very simple I'm just using some of these white seed beads and they kind of look like pearls and I believe I got these um, at Michael's a while back so I'm going to put a bead here a little white seed bead and then the 10 millimeter bead and then another um, seed bead now Crafty, my friend Crafty has a tutorial on this because we did a bead charm collab together so I will be sure to put her link down below in the drop down bar so you can check out the video she did a wonderful job on that video and she goes slowly and shows you how to make these for those of you who are first timers or beginners to jewelry making it's very it's a very good video so be sure to check out um, Crafty's YouTube channel as well and um, show her some love and subscribe to her I know she would appreciate it okay so we have one of those and let me do the other two quickly and I'm just using little head pins that I think they're about one inch so let me put that on and another little white seed bead you can make these fairly quickly um, this, since these are so small I think I'm going to need to cut a tiny bit off <clears throat> not much just a small amount want to make sure they close there we go and then here okay Okay, so that's good enough. Alright, so <clears throat> I'm going to take some hot glue and glue this stone in the middle here. And this was just um, a cheap little package of flat back rhinestones that I picked up at Michael's in the dollar section. Or I should say the dollar fifty section now because they're not a dollar anymore on that stuff. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this. Gorilla Glue hot glue stick right on the rhinestone and then I'm going to press it here and this really grabs and it grabs quickly so there we go <clears throat> okay alright so I'm going to open this jump ring here it's a strong gauge jump ring and I think I'm going to start by putting this small bead on bead charm uh, and I'm going to hold off on that one for a second I think yeah and then I'm going to put this on the larger one and then the smaller one now I'm going to set this down. Maybe it wasn't smart. Maybe I should have put um, this jump ring on the charm first. It would have been a lot easier. I did things a little backwards. So let me start again. Sorry about that. Sometimes I get rushed and then I 
I leave things out. So, okay. We open the jump ring. We put a jump ring on the charm. All right. So we're going to start by putting the small bead on. Then the charm. Then the larger bead. And then the smaller bead. Okay? Now I'm just going to hook this right on here. Right onto the bale. Trying to be careful not to drop it. Like that. There we go. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now we still have a little more to do. At the top here, you're going to need a little Christmas hook. going to twist it like this so I can put it on and you can just hook it onto the Christmas tree. There we go. I'm just going to close that up there. And as you can see, you can hang it on the tree like that. Okay, so now you have a couple of choices. You can make a bow just like I did in this one and then put a little flat back rhinestone on the back. Or you can do like I did on this one. I put a little flower here and then I just draped the pearls around. So I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do there. So I'm going to start with the pearls and see if I could do something with that. I think that would look really pretty on this. Since it does have kind of a, you know, um, beautiful feminine look. Okay. So I'm going to cut a piece of this, leaving three pearls on each side, like that. going to see just how it would look. So I guess I can do that because I can kind of drape it around like that. That would be pretty. And I can always put um, glitter on this little flower. So I think I'm going to go with that method. Um, I'm going to put just the tiniest amount of the Gorilla Glue hot glue right here. And I'm going to place it right here. I want it to cover the hole, but I don't want it to cover this little word here that says peace. Okay, so it grabbed right away when I did that, which is good. See? And so now I'm just going to put the tiniest amount of hot glue at the bottom of one of these pearls and just kind of drape it around where I want it exactly. Okay? You don't want a whole bunch. And like I said, with this Gorilla Glue, it really does grab quickly. Okay, so, so we draped that around where we wanted it. And I think I'm gonna do the same here. Just gonna put the teeniest amount, just enough to anchor it. Gonna kind of bend it like that and hold it like so. So now I'm going to cut off. Um, oh, popped up. Hold on. I should have held it a little longer than I did. Okay. So now I'm going to cut off in a couple of 
pearls here. I'm just going to cut off, I think, two. And I only need to anchor it by the top. So I'm thinking I would like to do that right here. Maybe put it right there. Kind of bend it in a half circle. I think that would look pretty. Let's do that. like so. See, so you have the pearls. And I might even drape a couple of more pearls down here. So let's do that. I hope you can see that. Sometimes the camera doesn't pick up things. It really is pretty. So I'm just going to, oh, you know, I need to cut a little more of that off here. There we go. I want it to look nice. Now normally these tags aren't going to take the time that it took per tag um, that I showed you here on this tutorial. But when you have to stop and explain everything and wait for things to dry before you can go on to the next step, it just appears longer. Okay, so if you look closely I think you can see where the pearls are. And from a distance, it really looks pretty. So we have a few pearls here draping, and then we have pearls around here. Like so. Okay. Now, I told you we were going to do something with this word here that says peace. If you put Mod Podge on that <clears throat> and glitter like this, the fine glitter, you're going to have a little bit of difficulty seeing the word. So I just used the Creatology Ultra Fine Glitter Glue in this clear, um, I guess you'd call it clear iridescent color. So I'm just going to shake it up and it just gives just the slightest hint so it doesn't actually cover up the word. I learned that with the other tags that I did. See? And as it clears, it'll just be the slightest hint of glitter so you can still read the word. Now right now, um, it might not look that way because it, it has to dry yet, but that's what will end up happening. And I'm going to do the same thing on this flower. And it'll have the same effect. Because I did the same thing on the other um, tag when I used the little flower. Yeah, It'll give it just that shimmer that we need. And you can see when it dried here, it turned out really pretty. Okay. And if you're wondering where I got these little tiny um, flat back rhinestones, I bought them a while back from the family dollar bargain store. It was kind of a mom and pop type 99 cent store. And I really liked it. And gosh darn it, they went out of business last January. I was so disappointed, um, but that's where I got that. So when I'm when I finish um, using those, I won't be able to get any more. Ah, okay. So here you go, folks. And let me see if I can lift up my camera a little bit. see it at a distance. 
really is pretty that sparkle and then of course you have the back which is just as sparkly so I think that we did a pretty good job on this and I hope you try this because it really is a lot of fun um, I think that these really turned out nice and it's a great way to craft and an inexpensive way to craft um, and as you know as far as the embellishments go you can pick up a lot of that stuff off eBay I purchased a lot of that from a lot of these little embellishments and things from uh, Chinese sellers and you have to know how to bid and when to bid and if you want me to go into um, how I do it I can surely show you um, it's pretty easy for me <laughs> I, I have a lot of practice so I hope you enjoyed this craft Have a very Merry Christmas and a blessed New Year. And I'll put all of these on my blog as well as all the links that I told you about in this video. Thank you all. God bless. Bye-bye.